NSF increases to one and a half megabit per second. 1988, Robert Morris unleashes the first internet worm. We said, uh-oh, what's that? And then we said, eh, don't worry about it. <laughs> Big mistake. <laughs> Big mistake. First indication of the dark side of the internet. This is almost 20 years after it began, 19 years after it began. We saw the first abuse. First abuse. And Robert Morris claimed it was an accident. It just got out of hand. Oh, well. OK, a report comes out of the Communi Computer Science and Telecommunications Board proposing a national research network. It had a very strong impact on Al Gore. He was a senator at the time. He basically helped create the backbone of the uh, high-speed backbone of the network. 89, we celebrate the 20th anniversary. In 1990, the ARPANET is itself replaced by the NSF net, running at a fairly high speed. 91, the World Wide Web is talked about by Tim Berners-Lee. Look how late that is in the history of the internet. Finally, upgraded to 43 megabits per second and growing very quickly. NSF nope, opens up the network to general commercial use with a very liberal, acceptable use policy. Almost anybody can get on. You, know, you have to really be abusive and, 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 and ugly not to participate, which was wonderful to get the network to deploy. So by then, we had three things that were going on. The constituency was enlarged, way, way out to the commercial world. We had a high-speed backbone network, thanks to Al Gore and the first President Bush, who enacted the High Performance Computing and Communications Act in 1991, gigabit backbone beginning to come in, and the World Wide Web, a wonderful graphic user interface. So we had the need, the dot-coms. We had the capability, a high-speed backbone. And now we had an easy interface for the user. Boom, it reached the, com the consumer world and, and the billions that we talk about today. There's the act I'm talking about. Internet Society formed. We passed a million hosts on the internet by this point. Mark Andreessen and Eric Biener deployed the Mosaic browser, which is the graphical user interface for the web. Cantor and Siegel introduced spam. We said, uh-oh, and this time we said, ouch. First spam message, now these two, were the most hated individuals on the internet. Two Arizona lawyers, okay, it was widely publicized, April 1994. Basically, they were called the green card lawyers who spammed the internet. And if you want to see the first spam ever on the internet, there it is. That was the first email spam. Those son of a guns decided to use our internet to advertise. How dare they crass behavior like that? Send an advertisement around. What they were doing, here's the date, um, April 12, 1994. They said, look, there's a lottery for green cards. Come to us. There's a deadline in June. We'll help you get a green card. Well, they sent it out all over the net to all the news groups. It really hit the network. And we saw that. We said, wait a minute. You can't do that. So we sent email back. Stop. Bad. Shouldn't do it. Darn it. We sent so much email back to them that we cooked their server. <laughs> An unintended consequence, we created the first denial of service attack in response to the first spam. <laughs> Wasn't our fault. <laughs> At any rate, this was, we, we now had the dark side of the internet coming at us fast and furious. The dark side didn't come in. There is a dark side to the internet, and it's all the things you might imagine. Spam, invasion of privacy, pornography, pedophilia, denial of service, worms, viruses, destruction of property, identity fraud, all the stuff. And uh, it's here. Not much we can do about it. Um, for example, uh, what enabled this thing? What was the enabler for the internet in the first place? Let me repeat it. You can reach anyone, hundreds of millions of users, easily, quickly, at no cost, in money or effort, just boom, send it out. Anonymously, guess what? That's a perfect enabler for the dark side. Sit in your basement and reach out at no cost and do things to millions and millions of people. And so, in fact, it is the perfect formula for enabling the dark side. And we recognized that real fast as the spam messages started to come. So here's an example. I don't like the choices. Okay. Uh, you, you, how many of you have gotten things like that and much worse? 